What do you really know about living in Hawaii? Like, what do you know about the traffic or how the islands are different or what it really costs to live here? Well, I'm gonna break down 10 realities of living in Hawaii for you right now. Please subscribe here for more videos on living in Hawaii and for real estate in Hawaii. And whether you're a local resident or if you're looking at moving to Hawaii or if you're a kama'aina that's moving home, let us know how we can help you. All right, number one, all the islands are different. Hawaii Island or the Big Island is about 4,000 square miles across and the eight islands make up about 10,900 square miles. So that gives you an idea of how big Hawaii Island or the Big Island really is. Now, the Big Island is known for main areas like Hilo, Kona, Waimea. Hilo is like a sleepy town. It's like it's stuck in the 60s. It's very lush and very rainy. And then on the Kona side, you've got more desert-like conditions. You've also got um, some of your high-end resorts like Hualalai, Waikoloa, Mauna Lani. And then you've got the Waimea side, which is more upcountry. There's like this ranch life happening there. Not a whole lot going on in terms of economy on the Big Island. Everything is pretty much tourism. And then you've got Maui. A lot of people like to say, we like to go to Maui. It's Maui. Maui is the second largest island kind of bougie, you know, people from Orange County love Maui, especially the Kihei, Wailea side. That's your high-end, more gated community type of resort. And then you've got Ka'anapali, Lahaina, that's almost more like your Waikiki. Um, that's over on the west side of the island. Maui also has kind of like a big hippie population. When you go to Paia, lots of patchouli in the air, lots of like crystal shops. But locals live in Kahului and um, Wailuku, but they also really love the upcountry. Again, Makawao, Kula, and I think one of the reasons why locals love upcountry so much is because it gives like this uncrowded, expansive sense of space and it's kind of remote and it's just like a place where I don't know, we like to be left alone. And then there's Molokai and Lanai. Those islands are really like small towns. If you want to live off the grid, Molokai is the place to do it. People are really friendly. Lanai is owned now by Larry Ellison. So you've got kind of more of this like wellness retreat feel going on there. You have Manele Bay down by the ocean and you have the Sensei, which is up at the Koele resort area and both of those are run by the Four Seasons. Again, with these outer islands, not a whole lot by way of economy going on there. Everything's pretty much tourism. On the big island, you might have a little bit more agriculture with Kona coffee and macadamia nuts. And then there's Kauai. Kauai just really has my heart. It is lush and beautiful. Um, kind of small. There's one road that, you know, gets you from one end of the island to the other. People are so friendly and so generous. And I feel like people are generous there because they've had to get through hurricanes. Like my mom was there during Hurricane Iniki and the way that the community really came together was amazing. And I feel like that genuine sense of aloha has passed down through generations. And then finally we have Oahu. Oahu, crowded, touristy, high rises and the rest of what you're going to hear on this video, the other nine points are really going to be dedicated to the realities of Oahu. Number two, each side of Oahu is different. So we're going to address the windward side, the north shore, the west side, central Oahu, and then Honolulu, or what we like to call town. So let's start with the windward side. Over on the windward side, probably the most popular area on Oahu is Kailua. Kailua is like your Instagrammable area with Lani Kai Beach and it's turquoise water and the white sandy beach and then you've got the pillbox hike as well as the Mokulua Islands or what we like to call the Moks. You've got adorable coffee shops. Everything is like so cute and people love to be seen there. Houses are pretty expensive um, but it's really it's just a vibe. There's such a beach lifestyle going on there. You know people wear slippers every day but count on people wearing like Olukai slippers which is like a hundred dollars. And then on the windward side you've also got areas like Kaneohe with this beautiful backdrop of the Ko'olau mountains and then as you move towards the north shore all those little towns along the beach you know it gets a lot of rain but it's also kind of got this remote vibe going on. Okay when you get to the north shore the north shore is really the surfer's paradise. It's 
different from Kailua in such a way that it's not some place that you want to live to be on the gram. You're going to live on the North Shore because you love the ocean and you love to surf and you're very skilled at it. Um, the community there is, again, it's a vibe, but it's much more of a laid back vibe. Like no one goes out with any makeup on. Everybody wears like rubber slippers, the $3.99 ones from Long's. Um, it's not a place to necessarily be seen. It's a place just to be. Um, Wailua is another area of the North Shore, which is a little bit more plantation. People who live there still love going to the beach, but they also just really love being all about Hawaii. And then you move into central Oahu. Central Oahu is really more of your suburbia, a um, lot of new development going on in the Eva Plain. And then you move towards Kapolei. Kapolei is like the second city that is serving west side of Oahu. Now the west side of Oahu is really where you have a lot of native Hawaiians. There's um, homestead land there. The beaches are absolutely gorgeous. You can get a lot of house for your money, but traffic, ew, traffic is kind of a nightmare getting in and out of that community. Same for the North Shore. If you're gonna live on the North Shore, um, you know, working in town, can be very challenging. I have an uncle though that did it. He worked at Pearl Harbor, he lived at Sunset Beach, and Monday through Friday, he made that drive. And then moving on towards town, town is town. A lot of high rises, a lot of hustle and bustle. Um, the houses, you know, they're gonna be a little bit smaller, they're gonna be a little bit more expensive, but you live there because of the convenience and because you're a townie. But all the different areas of Oahu are so different. Oh, there's Waikiki, right? Waikiki is very touristy, very beachy, very transient. Um, you'll feel a little bit of transient kind of stuff going on on this island as well. A lot of people coming and going, especially with our military presence. Cost of living. Actually, check out the video I did from 2020. Spoiler alert, most of that stuff is extremely out of date given the housing increase of like 30 to 40% and the rampant increase in prices and inflation. But we're at Safeway, so let's go inside and look at how much a gallon of milk is. So milk. Um, here we go. $8.69 for milk. It's pretty pricey. That's pretty pricey. That's pretty pricey, right? And uh, if it goes on sale, well, no, the organic one, you can get it for $7.49 if you buy two or more. It's like the worst in the nation and when it rains, oh my gosh, it's horrible. We have terrible potholes and watch out when a water main breaks, which happens quite often because our infrastructure is also like not up to par, but yeah, you can see it here jobs. It seems like everybody's a fireman, a nurse, a police officer, a flight attendant, a realtor like me. Um, most of our economy is run on tourism, military, and government jobs. But let me tell you this, if you know construction and you, are, you do construction by trade, you will thrive here. These guys are so busy. Critters. In Hawaii, we don't have snakes. We don't have bears. Uh, we don't have rabies. That's why it's kind of hard to travel here with a family pet. But we do have centipedes, we have B-52 roaches. I don't care how much your house is, where you buy, you're gonna have them and geckos will live in your house and they will become your friend. Types of construction. This is very typical of a house in Hawaii. Of course, this one's being renovated, but the style of it is very typical. Single wall construction, jealousy windows, AC, it's a luxury. And if you're gonna put AC in, it's gonna be this style of split AC rather than central AC. Not much insulation. Oh, parking. Let's go talk about parking. It's a luxury to have a garage. So the happy medium is a carport. And usually you're gonna get one place for the car to park. Parking is very tight. Also, this home is built on post and pier foundation that you can see here. We typically don't have basements in our house. Shopping, we've already established that it's expensive. One of the reasons why is because of shipping. Shipping is an added cost. You ever see things on infomercials that say, shipping is free, and then in the fine print it says, except to Alaska or Hawaii. It's because we have this thing called the Jones Act. 
which prevents any ships coming into Hawaii that are foreign. They have to be American or they have to stop an American port first. We don't have Ikea, so good luck furnishing your house. We don't have Chick-fil-A and um, yeah, it's just really inconvenient. <laughs> Number nine, you don't want to live in Waikiki. I mean, okay, I love a good Waikiki staycation. I love to surf in Waikiki. I love to come here for dinner, listen to Hawaiian music, stay in the hotel, play tourists, like we like to say, but yeah, you just don't want to live in Waikiki. Finally, we have Hawaii Instagram viral accounts that it's kind of like our very own TMZ. Don't do anything stupid. Like, don't try to play with a monk seal. Don't try to ride a sea turtle. Don't desecrate a statue. I mean, yes, this is a beautiful place of adventure, but it's not vacation every day. People live here, people honor this place. And if you get caught and you end up on Instagram, I mean, that stuff is gonna follow you home. People will be all over you. Just don't do it. My dad met my mom when he was stationed here in the army. My mom was a Hawaiian, Chinese, Filipino girl living on the sugar plantation and he whisked her away to Missouri for a better life and that's where they raised my sisters and me pretty much. Although we came here every summer to visit family and my mom kept us connected to our culture through hula, through music, through food. Even my friends couldn't wear their, their shoes in the house, which wasn't the norm in the Midwest and it was kind of embarrassing, but I'm really appreciative of that now because that's such a Hawaii thing. Living in the Midwest was simple. It was very affordable. It was convenient, but there was something about Hawaii that just was always home for me not living here wasn't an option. It's expensive, it can be inconvenient, but beyond the beauty and beyond the beaches, it's the people, it's the aloha spirit, it's the culture, and that's something you simply can't put a price tag on.